In the business of paint correction, we have gotten more efficient at removing defects than we ever have been before. That includes advances in compounds, in pads, and tool technology. All these things have come along to make removing defects from a painted surface faster. The problem is, is that leads to questions like this one from our friend Mike. Mike is wondering, well, how much can I remove or when is it safe or how do I know if I have enough clear coat to work with? And it's a really common question. A lot of people ask that. So what we're going to cover today is a few different tips and kind of the go, no go decision on when it's safe to polish paint. The world of paint correction and polishing is getting more complicated by the minute. And every week we receive hundreds of questions in comments on social media, on videos and emails. We want to answer those questions. This is Rupa's Replies. Probably one of the first questions that comes to your mind when we get into this topic of removing clear coat and how much is, well, how much am I removing when I do a compound or polish? And the answer that is, is there's really no set answer. There are three things that really kind of play into the variables that determine how much clear coat you're removing in any given process. Number one is going to be the choice of the products you're using, the coarseness of the compound. Uh, if you're using something like a fiber pad, microfiber, or wool instead of foam, even the type of tool movement, a rotary versus something like a random orbital, all these things are going to play almost like an EQ level with how much you're removing. The more aggressive the combination, the more material you're removing. The less aggressive, the less you're removing. Then the second thing that comes into play is you as the operator and your technique. So that includes the transverse radar, your arm speed. Slow arm speed, for example, is going to remove more material with a random orbital tool because it's working in one spot for longer. Heavy pressure on a rotary or a gear driven tool, for example, is going to remove more material. So you, in some ways, are actually part of the variable in this equation. And then the third thing that actually comes into play is the type of paint you're working on. A softer paint is going to obviously be easier to remove. More of it's going to come off in less time. The opposite is true of a hard paint. You're on a very hard painted surface. The material is going to come off at a slower rate. So you take all three of these things and combine them together. There's really no set way to measure an exact precise amount and say that a certain combination removes a certain amount of material because all of these variables impact that. One key fact that you have to recognize is that you can't fix paint that isn't there. And that's really just a way of saying if a scratch is too deep or through the surface, you can't fix it. You're not going to be able to push paint back into that. So we can improve the appearance of those kinds of scratches, but we do not want to take sanding, heavy compounding or polishing techniques excessively to a deep scratch because all we're going to do is thin all of the clear coat around that scratch. So a compounding step, maybe even a sanding step to reduce the appearance of a very deep scratch isn't a bad idea. We just don't want to keep chasing it all the way to the bottom. So one thing you can do that will help you make these decisions on whether or not the paint is safe to work on is to get information. And the easiest way to do that is get yourself a paint gauge like that one. This is a very basic one, low cost. These can be found in a number of different configurations and price ranges to suit, but you really just want one that reads accurately. Um, so this one will read over ferrous and non-ferrous metals. So we'll be able to read the paint over a metal substrate, basically uh, the hoods, the doors and things like that. Plastic bumpers and stuff. Unfortunately, this meter is not going to read, but if we get a good read on the paint on the other parts of the car, we can make some assumptions again about the bumpers and any other plastic parts that might not read on the meter like this. Now, how much is safe to work with? Our recommendation is three mils or more. So three mils is kind of your cutoff line. Uh, for you, for those of you who read in microns, it's going to be 75 ish microns, 80 microns. So three mils, that's your go, no go. Anything at or below or close to that, you're starting to approach a level of total film build with the paint. That's your primer, your color, your base coat, where the color comes from and your clear coat. About 50% of that on average is going to be clear. So if you're reading around three, you're at a very, very thin level of clear coat remaining. Most new factory vehicles are becoming thinner and thinner. There's less paint on them than there's ever been before. Some older cars are going to have a lot more for you to work with. The key is understanding that once you hit that three mil threshold, you know, 75 ish microns, 80 microns, you're going to want to make a very, very 
concerted effort to minimize the amount of heavy compounding, polishing, or sanding you do because you don't have a lot of material left to work with. It would be a good idea to have a conversation with your customer and see if they can educate you a little bit on the history of the car. Has it been heavily compounded before by another detailer? Has it been in an accident and been refinished? These are things that you can use, little clues that you can use to put together the history of the paint and make a decision that one is going to preserve that vehicle for you or your customer and make sure you don't end up with a surprise when you find out that you've gone through the clear coat and your customer or yourself have to repaint a car to undo that damage. So hopefully this is helpful information for you, whether you're a professional doing this for a career or you're just doing this at home on your own to keep your car preserved. Ultimately, we wanna keep that paint on that car for as long as we can, even though we've gotten really good at taking paint off with all the modern detailing technology. If it was helpful, give us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe. You wanna get those notices every time we upload new content and leave us a comment below. If you've got a question that you think we should be answering here on Rupa's Replies, we wanna hear it because we might answer it on the next one.